to be with you, teachers, and uh, I'm very glad to come back to Durango. Uh, last year was the first time I came, and I have been visiting the city for the last months, and very often. So now I, I am very glad to come back. Today is a workshop, so you should be able to do several things with me. So are you ready to move along and have fun? Yes, I, some of you are like, yes. Okay, are you ready to move along and have fun? Yes. All right, now I can tell you I'm much more than ready. Ahora sí, siguiente slide. A very quick overview. I know we are running behind the time, so I'll do my best to catch up and still have fun. The first thing we have to look at is a world of images. So that's something we need to analyze. And very briefly, it's an introduction to the different themes we will show later on. Then I want to revisit visual literacy. And what is that? So let's answer that question. I decided to invite Beatrix Potter. Now, Beatrix is a very famous author. She passed away several years ago, but she is going to be with us in spirit. And I will have to move into storytelling with images, so I will give you some tips of the trade. As my dear teacher and colleague from UHET has introduced me, I am a storyteller, and actually I do that for um, different, more philanthropic purposes, because I don't really do it for any other organization. Now, I am invited by Cambridge, but I do those things for different places. And it's going to be your turn to tell us a story. So that's why I told you, you have to be ready to move around. So stand up. Yes, if you have been to my sessions, you know I always start with some stretching. So stretch, stretch, and now try to touch the ceiling. That's kind of difficult, but you will be able to do it. And relax. Very nice. Clap three times. One, two, three. And now right hand up and stretch, stretch, and right hand down. Left hand up and stretch, stretch, and left hand down. How do you feel? Okay, so that is the idea, because we have to get ready for the next. Sit down. Next slide, please. A world of images. Even if we, if we, if we have to, and I, and I listen to this fantastic opening plenary, where we have to understand different disabilities or different situations people live. Even if we cannot see we live in a world of images and symbols. And all of those images and symbols represent many things for us. So we can have several clicks here. One more. From our ancestors to modern times, we can see that today images always represent something. Now, at the beginning, in the early stages of our lives, the images were very literal. They meant what it, they were taken. So we have pictures, and they were clear representations of a fighting, or we had, for example, there we are. We had the hunters preparing to hunt different animals. Even the first pictures taken on the man on the moon can show what we have. Can you tell me what emotions or memories bring the following images to you? Look at them. Tell your partners very quickly, what do you think about the other images you can see there? What do they bring to you? What memories do you have in your head? Okay. Toot. Okay. This time, I, I hope the laser shows very well. And you will have to sh say only one word connected to the image. Are you ready? So here we go. This one. I will be showing on my left. Love, OK. How about this one? OK. How about this one? How about that one? 
Music, okay. So if we see images can be very literal. Look, can they be always very literal? Let's show the next slide. And the following is something that I am quoting my colleague, Meili Sierra. She's a consultant. She delivered something talking about visual literacy. And one of the things she mentions and highlights is that we live in an era in which what we see is not what we get. What we see is what the person creating the image wants us to see. Now, do you agree with that or not? Let's see the next slides, and let's see why I am giving you this example. Now, that's what you see, and this is what you get. And of course, they tell you that zero is, means you will be fine and fantastic. And, Macmill and, and McDonald's is now showing all of these images because they want to, to show that they are healthy. So those are some of the ideas. Now, of course, marketing can be deceiving. You will find the person in an image, and you will find the person with very nice, luxurious clothing, but then the person is not like that. So that it's not exactly what we see. How do we promote or how we be develop visual literacy? Now, this is the first time we will do per activity. Hands up. Hands up. And pair up. Find somebody to pair up. You cannot be alone. Find somebody to pair up. Mac trios are accepted. Find somebody to pair up. Right? Very nice. I see a teacher is left alone here, and there's another teacher left alone there. I told you you had to move. Come on, come on, again. Pair, pair up, pair up, pair up. That's it. Activity time. I am going to show different images. What you have to do is think about and talk to your partners about possible activities you will do with the image. What questions would you ask? And be ready because I'm not going to be standing here. I prefer to be among you. So I'll be asking questions. Are you ready? Image number one, show. Instructions, checking, and go. Next. Talk to your partners. Think about questions. And like I said, I am going to be moving around. Don't worry, you can continue thinking about ideas and ideas. I'm going to give the cameraman a hard time. Toot! Hands up! Hands up, hands up. Clap three times. All right. Well, that's something I stole from a teacher to get students' attention. Somebody wants to tell us the questions or the topics you would introduce? This is volunteer. Otherwise, I will use the other V. OK, then we have the first one. Your name, and what would you use it for? Well, my name is Jasmine, and the brilliant teacher here told us that we can use this image to work with WH questions and ask things like, uh, who is he, what is, why is he there, uh, where is he from, what is he doing there? Well, plenty of things using WH questions. Thank you very much. I will move over here and then let's find somebody here would like to share what questions, what topics you would connect. Thank you. Okay, well, my name is Luis David, and my partner and I decided that we can use this type of images to create activities as experiences. Uh, the question could be, what was your greatest experience? And so uh, showing pictures, uh, you can describe 
what you have there or what did you do on that time? Uh, teacher, claps for the teacher. Good. Let's show the next slide, la siguiente. Have a look at another picture. Talk to your partners, talk to your partners. What would you use that picture for? What would you use it for? What theme, what subject? To continue talking, consult the teacher. Doot, doot, doot. Okay, I already have a volunteer. That's very nice. That's very nice. Your name? My name is Wendy. Um, we thought that maybe we could use that picture to talk about cultures and costumes around the world. I don't know. It could be a good idea. And claps for the teacher. Somebody else? Somebody else? Ah, okay, I have one more teacher, thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Roberto, and we decide that probably this picture will help to talk about future plans or your dreams, for example, which place would you like to visit, and also use of models. Claps for teacher Robert. Liz, I have been visiting different schools in the last days, and I observe the lessons. Normally, teachers ask, what do you think they are thinking? And if we look at the previous slide, then do you think it's a good idea to explore the world? And then we can connect the pictures, etc. So normally, the questions I have listened to are connected to the literal meaning. But how about what teacher suggests? Not the literal meaning about exploration, which is very obvious, but what are your dreams for the future? That is not exactly the, what the picture says, but that is a message that teacher is getting from the picture. What message did you get with the next picture? Talk to your partners. What is the message? What is the idea? Left hand up. The other left. Okay. <laughs> Very nice. Ideas? Now, I should do this. I should like keep you there, standing up, and see. Now, I have a teacher who's just right, right, right behind, but he's too far from me. Can you help me and, and give that? Because otherwise, this talk might take forever. And I, I have to catch up with the time. Again, teacher, your name. My name is Luis, and we were saying that since elephants are known to be very fond to their families, then maybe we can talk about values and develop some kind of composition that um, involves values. Excellent, brilliant teacher. Claps for that, teacher. Bones, memories. Uh, elephants are impressively intelligent and one, with a wonderful memory. They have no idea what Alzheimer's means. So it's, it's something we can connect and we can start talking about that. Want to know what I observe in a lesson? How many eyes can you see? Count. How many ears can you hear? How many elephants can you see? Okay, let's continue. Yes, probably if you ask questions at a lower level, 
that's Bloom's taxonomy, and you only ask cons comprehension. This beautiful picture and the wonderful idea our teacher has shared fades out. So we get the meaning then. If we are going to use images, let's do something much more positive and beneficial with them. Let's show the next. So what is visual literacy anyways? I'm sure you have been exposed to the term new literacies. Well, among the new literacies we have, visual literacy is considered one of those new literacies we need to acquire. Now, digital literacy is one of the very important information and ac actual access to information and how we handle information is a literacy we have to develop. Well, we also have visual literacy. Let's see what this is. According to experts, visual literacy implies sending and receiving messages. Uh, messages, sorry, images. Um, using, sorry, it's receiving messages using images. So there is a type of that. And experts also say that it is also involves the ability to construct meaning from visual images. So as simple as that, uh, these experts have analyzed that when we are looking at images, we have to be careful with the way we use them. So, next, thank you. The facts. The facts are, and I'm not going to read out from the slide, the facts are, and the facts are, one more. I will highlight only ideas. Look at the information we have. We are talking about 60,000 times more quickly than textual information. So it's very fast. Another highlight. People will have spent around 22,000 hours exposed to TV, media, social network. Blah, 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 blah. Actually, we are teaching the teenagers, sorry, the screenagers. While the screenagers, because even since before they are born, they are with a phone. They are just in the hospital, in maternity, and there you have daddy, the first selfie with baby. And then baby has control of the phone. And something else, uh, when we speak about visual literacy, we, we, we want to talk about not only the images, but also connected to the other skills, as you will see in a moment. Show. Next. So, what should we do with that? The thing is that um, if we look at our, our young students, they are specialists dealing with images. And they, they know how to use them. They, they actually produce very powerful ways of communicating their ideas. Now, look out, or as I say it with my Mexican influence, waters, o sea, aguas. Because images not only communicate rapidly, but they do so with a lasting effect. So images can hurt a lot. Next. It's time to shake up. I had music here, but that something that's happening is we don't have the music. But I know there is a contents in this ETC, so it's time to shake up, stand up, and take your selfies. Come on, stand up and take your selfies with your fellow colleagues. You have to send that picture. Remember, take your selfies with your friends. Get together in a group. Get together, get together. Take your selfies. This is a moment, remember you have to send it. If you want to participate, yes, that's correct, get together. If you are all alone, find somebody. Photobomb, yes. Everybody gather. <laughs> that's nice. Doot. To continue taking selfies, Console the teacher, claps for you, teachers. Sit down. The next. Now, there was a little bit of music here. Now, this is Beatrix Potter. Now, I will sit down. This is very cosy. Beatrix Potter is a 
woman of images. Now, actually, Beatrix was a person who was more dedicated to science. Now, Beatrix lived in a very difficult world because she was not allowed to work in the place where she wanted to work. That's a sad story. It can be. But Beatrix decided to depict animals, like me. Yes, very much like you, Mr. Fluffy Cat. And she actually used different animals to tell stories. Animals tell fantastic stories. Oh, yes, I know. So should we share a story with them? Of course. I have a favorite one. The tale of Peter the Rabbit. Oh, yes, that's a good one. Let me do that. So next, activity time. Before we look at the story, I can see you are experts with the selfie technology. So you are about to ask the oracle of saying Google. And find the following. Next, show me the next slide. Figure it out. There are numbers, and all of them are connected to Beatrix Potter. Probably you can guess. But if you have a neighbor who has enough data on their cell phone, try to find. Or imagine, what do these numbers, 14, 30, 1866, 1902, 2, 2, 1, 2, 43. Find out. You have two minutes. Go. Try to find out. The oracle of Saint Google is with you. The Star Wars followers normally say, may the force be with you. I usually say with this activity, May Saint Google will be with you. And where is the microphone? Here she is, because we are going to move now. Have you ever played popcorn? No, we have eaten popcorn, teacher. OK, yes. But this is a game I play with students. What I do is I give you a condition, and if the condition applies to you, you clap. So popcorn, if you took a shower in the morning. OK. I didn't listen lots of popcorns. Popcorn, if you are wearing glasses. Popcorn if you are wearing contact lenses. I knew those eyes are not blue. OK. Popcorn if you are a happy teacher. Popcorn if you love teaching. Popcorn if you are ready to read. Ah, some of you are ready to read. Now, this time, I will say a number, and you will have to clap if you have something to say. Ready? And my friend here is going to go and take you the micro. Here we go. 14. OK, over there. There we have a first teacher who wants to share something. 14, 14, 14, 14. And the first specialist says, uh, I heard that at the age of 14, she wrote her first book or something like that. OK, claps for the teacher. 30, 30. Nobody wants to pop? Nobody any idea? Well, we'll check. OK, there we have a teacher who has asked the oracle of saying Google. The Tale of the Little Pig Robinson was published in 1930. OK, that's interesting. Very nice. 1866. Oh, the teacher next to the former teacher. Thank you. 1866. Hi, thank you. She was born on July 28th. 1866. Okay, nice. Claps for the teachers. 1902. 1902, anybody? Popcorn? Over there. Popcorn, good. <laughs> um, she did in 1902. She died in died? that year. Not really. <laughs> Anybody else? There we have, okay, there we have another teacher popping up. Uh, she published her best seller. Uh, 
dans The Tale of Squirrel Napkin. Oh, yes, Peter Pan, Peter the Rabbit. Ah. Nice, very good. Claps for the teacher. And finally, two, two, one, two, four, three. Show me the next slide. That can be difficult, but I left that at the end. So show me next. Yes, 14. She began to write and keep a diary. She published 30 books, but the teacher shared with us something different too. That's the year when she was born. And another. She published the first edition to the tale of Peter Rabbit. And the 22 of December 1943, she passed away. But the, the body left, but the spirit lives. Many children, like myself, for example, have been influenced by tales by Peter Rabbit. Now you see movies, you have songs, you have computer-generated images. Beatrix is there. And let me tell you, for all of those Harry Potter followers, she was the very famous, very first famous Potter in the family. So having said that, I have something else. Let's show. Let's look at Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. But to do this, I want to invite somebody. But he's kind of a shy person, and he decided to go and do a, can, can you just do something, some talking, or read about my guest while I go and get him? Brilliant. So show me the next slide. Storytelling with images. Some tips of the trade. And show me the next slide. Let me go and fetch my friend. Finally, it takes a while. Oh, my hat, this is not a proper hat. Now have a proper hat. Then love everybody. My name is Priyatov Nurovsky. Now as you watch on my introduction, I was born in Krikosia. Now Krikosia is a place, nobody knows what it is. But it's a nice place. You're going to listen a story, but you're going to work. Where is my lovely assistant? Aya, over there, handouts. We need the handouts. Go get the handouts. Understand los papeles para que hagan actividad. Very good. I am tomando foto. A unos, es unos famosos. I have an applause for Ugu. Very nice. Well, in the meantime, I can tell you, people don't know about Krokosia. Krokosia is, 
Is it Eastern Europe? Anybody here from Eastern Europe? Well, Eastern Europe is always changing. One day is independent, another day is not. One day belongs to one country, another day belongs to another country, and life goes like that. It's like for example. But now, a friend of mine made Krakosia very famous. Do you know his name? His name is Tom Hanks. Jewish, just like myself. Tom Hanks produced interesting film about Krokosi. And that's why people know today about Krokosi. But they didn't know about Krokosi. Well, we can see you are receiving the handouts. And now I am going to be the storyteller because Mr. P is kind of boring. And he doesn't have good pronunciation. You don't worry, I have my technique to change pronunciation because I can see your what face. Cara de what, no entendies lo que yo hago. No even in español, no even in English. Don't worry, have my technique. Everybody, yeah, hand out, hand out, paper, show. Show me the paper. Very good. Excellent. Nice. Very good. Show me the next slide. Everybody look at that part of the page. Okay, very good. You're going to fix the pics and put them in chronological order. I knew I was going to have these beautiful big screens, but since you have little eyes, I prefer handout. Well, I tell story, you check chronological order. What's that? What's that, teacher? Oh, you listen to story, and if A is number one, then put her number one. If E is number two, put no number two. I like that. Very simple. And now, let's read story. Well, let's change accent. No, that's not language. Change to British. The tale of Peter Rabbit. Oh, accent correct. The tale of Peter Rabbit. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits. And their names were Floppy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with the mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fig tree. Now, a fat tree for some of you is an abeto. Okay. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the line, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now, run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. So, old Miss Rabbit took her basket and an umbrella because very sunny and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant beans. Now Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the line to gather blackberries. But Peter, <laughs> who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeeze onto the gate. And first he ate some lettuces and some French beans. Gulp. And then he ate some radishes. But around the end, he was feeling very sick. He went to look for some parsley. It's good. Mr. McGregor, 
was on his hands and knees, planting young cabbages. But he jumped out and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, but he had forgotten the way back to the gate. <laughs> he lost one of his shoes. And he lost another shoe and the cabbages. And after losing both, he ran in four legs and went faster. So that I think he might have got away altogether. But he ran into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large grass buttons on his jacket, quite new, by the way. Peter gave up, and he started crying. <laughs> I'll tell you the other part. Are you ready? Yes? Check your answers with the partners. Maybe you are right, maybe you are wrong. I don't know. Okay, one, two, three, and then you answer four, five, six. One, two, three. Okay, that's another way I used to get people's attention. I am like Mr. P, I have my ideas. Show me the answers. Show me the answers, next. Answer key, o sea, es la respuesta. First, what happened? Shout, shout, what happened? Yes, because the mother took her basket. Okay. And next, show me the answer. Ah, there is Peter. He's looking at the fields. Whose fields? Who's the owner? Uh, Mr. McGregor. We don't know who he is. Next. Ah, he went home to the gate. <laughs> And then, well, he ate many things, but he ate radishes. Now, you don't have the color, so I'm sorry, but they are radishes. What are these? What's that? They are cabbages. And who's planting the cabbages? All Mr. McGregor. By the way, that's what he was doing, chasing poor Peter Rabbit with a rake. Now, turn around the handout. Turn around the handout and show me the next slide. Reflection time. Was the previous activity text to text, text to self, or text to world? A ver, talk with my partner, talk with a neighbor and see what you have. Text to text, text to self, or text to world? And why? Hands up, who wants to participate? I have a lovely assistant. You have to re give us the reason. I have a lovely assistant. Text to text, text to self, of text to the world. Hmm? Nobody? Don't worry if we make mistakes, it's part of learning. Text to text, text to self, text to the world. And that's something you will remember. Hands up, anybody wants to help us? Mm, you are very shy teachers. Over there we have a very courageous teacher, excellent. I want to see brave teachers here. Thank you, thank you. Give us the reasons, right? We listen to you. All right, images are connected to the text. So the exercise is definitely text to text. Thank you, teacher claps for the teacher who's participating. Another slide. Me enseña la otra diapositiva. 
Another activity. What do you think happens next? Look at the pictures you have. Can you predict what happens next? Show me the images. Otra vez. Gracias. It's checking Facebook. Thank you. One more. One more. And one more. Thank you. Only three images. Tough as a little. What do you think they are talking about? Oh. Ok, el otro micrófono no funcionaba. Si nos dan sonido, gracias. Tut, tut. Back to our world. Who wants to tell us what happens? Tell us gossip. Tell us something about the story. If you know Peter, well, probably you know the story already. Somebody? An idea? A prediction? Over there, another brave and courageous teacher. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Wendy again. I think that the mother found him and took him back home, and then he was reunited with his brothers. Okay. Congratulations to the teacher. And claps for her. I can read you the other part of the story, but if you want to know what happens, you will have to send me an email. Because I'm not going to read for you anymore. Thank you, teachers. And show me the next slide. Reflection. The activity you completed, text to text, or text to self, or text to the world. I'll go and get my friend, and you continue with this. Thank you very much. Well, that was Dr. Nuronsky. I hope you enjoy the show with Mr. Nuronsky. Toot. Text to sex, text to self, or text to the world. It is a little bit more of text to self because the students have to use their emotions, but still is connected to the story, is prediction. What is text to self? Show me the next slide. Me puede enseñar la otra slide? Questions. Ask your partners questions. Do you like the story? Why? Why do you think he is a naughty rabbit? Are you like Peter? So if you notice now, the questions are more connected to you. The simplest question is, do you like the story? Do you want to know what happens next? Well, go and get the book. <laughs> Show me the next. Look at the following pictures, and now you have another activity. What place or what places are illustrated with these images? Shout, shout. A mall, shopping malls. Now, do you think a child can get lost in a mall? Oh, well, actually, they get lost everywhere. I have a little four-year-old daughter, and any time we go to the place where we have to shop in clothes, she hides in the clothes. So we almost had a heart attack at a shopping place in Monterrey because we didn't find her for five minutes, but it was an eternity. <laughs> so yes, activity time now. Show me the next slide. In groups, this time, try to get together in groups of three or four, but I want you to prepare an updated version to our story. Peter gets lost in the mall. How will you do it? How will you use it? 
Come on, you will have only two minutes for this because we will have to move into the next activity. Two minutes, very quickly. Well, well, how would you change and adapt the story? What else would you do with the story? One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, not everybody's ready. Class, class, class. Okay, there we are. Anybody wants to share the version? Very quickly, a summary of the version you have? Over there, please. Thank you. Now you tell me the story. Got very time, yeah. Okay, very little time. So uh, the rabbit family went to the mall. The mom war warned Peter and all the brothers not to wander off to the arcade. But she had to go to the bathroom and say, like, please keep here, stay here. She went to the bathroom and, surprise, Peter goes to the arcade and gets lost. All right. And that happens very often. No, okay. Never. Claps for these teachers and their wonderful ideas. Final reflection. Is that text to text, text to self, or text to the world? I think it's rather obvious. What I wanted to illustrate with the following activities is that if you have one single story, you can multiply the story in different ways. Show me the next. In many textbooks, we will have short stories, and the instructions are very simplistic. Listen to the story. And then the only thing I notice sometimes teachers do is they play the audio, they take out the phone, and then they check their email. OK? So no, not a good idea. Uh, what we need to do is to develop group dynamics through social awareness. So if we have a story here, for example, there is Mask Man, I have Monty the Mouse, I have beautiful Mary, she's a scientist, and I have Trevor. Say hello to Trevor. Hello, everybody. I'm afraid. Why? Because people think I am a monster. Oh, they do? Yes. What did I tell you? I have brown, orange eyes, and a big green head, and purple hair. I'm a monster. Oh, no, Trevor, you're not a monster. And we are going to help our friends to love you. Sit down there. So we connect with the students, and then our students have to act out. You can either use other toys so your students can act it out, and do something with that. Because if you see, there are no words. They only listen. But if you tell little ones, sit down and listen, will they sit down and listen? Not only is they have something to do. By the way, the idea there is that our students have something to learn. Storytelling belongs to language arts. The idea of disguises and making voices, it is always something that is delightful and unforgettable. If you have been to professional storytelling sessions, you will always remember the pirates, the princes, the kings, the queens, and the monsters. However, technology today gives you the opportunity to create other things. Show me the next. You can have the connection to the video. Show me the next, because we don't have video. The thing is that there was, oh, yes, we do. Thank you. Can you play? Can you watch? Oh, we do have a play. A 
an unknown world. about the possible story behind Conjure up the little sound that's carried in the wind when freed it wakes the trees out of their slumber shiny dress blow the sound away drum the branches Do you think we can generate interest in creating stories just by watching these? Those, this is a site, and show me the next slide, please. This is a site where you can find activities based on stories. The lesson plan is ready. This is known as film education. I didn't want to give you a long list, endless list of different links because it's useless. Uh, you can see yourself, you look at the handle, you only check number one and you forget. Only one. The film education site, you will find activities. For example, this is a storytelling, and we also have the handouts, the teacher's notes. You will have some ideas on how you can do the activity with the video. Because we know we are teaching the screenagers. In a nutshell, Images have been with us all the time. Words depict the images as part of literature. We study imagery. Visual literacy is a skill to be developed and above all, to be educated and guided. And I really emphasize on that. Stories will always be excellent, an excellent way to foster creativity. From time to time, sit down and read stories to your students. Don't tell them only sit down and listen. But if you do that, make sure they have something to do, because it would be boring. Use images wisely, because after all, an image is worth a thousand words. Thank you. On behalf of Escuela de Lenguas, UGED, and ETC 2017, we would like to give you this gift as a sign of gratitude for sharing your knowledge and your experience. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.